Dr. Raghunath, welcome to Altos. Tell us a little bit about this Council for Responsible Political Behavior. We know that it was a brainchild of former Archbishop Joseph Harris, but tell us a little bit about the, the roles and functions of the Council for Responsible Political Behavior. Okay, before I do that, let me go back a little bit. The, the Archbishop Harris, as well as several other civil society organizations came mm -hmm. together and drafted a code. Mm -hmm. They drafted the code in 2014, took it to the political parties, and the political parties endorsed the code. Okay. It was only after the political parties endorsed the code that the civil society organizations, led by Archbishop Harris, went out there to find members of, or to serve on a council which will monitor the adherence to the code. So that's the context in which we have mm -hmm. come on. We are there simply to go look at what is happening on the campaign and in the campaign period. So I know we've been accused of not saying things that has happened three months ago and six months ago. Yes, we are only focused on the campaign period. And thus, when a campaign starts, so for instance, when we were told we will have an election by August the 14th, we said we could start monitoring at that point in time. So that's where we start monitoring. Uh, what we do is we try, uh, the nine members of the council, uh, try to look at some of the, what is happening on the campaign trail, follow what is being published in the media, print and electronic, but we also depend upon the citizenry at large, the political parties, to report where there are violations, because we wouldn't see everything. Mm -hmm. uh, with social media these days, a lot gets said and we wouldn't know about it. So we invite uh, citizens to write to us, tell us what are the violations, and provide us with evidence. Once they have done so, we will then sit as a council, review the evidence, and if the case demands, we'll then issue a release saying whether a party has breached a has code breached, or not. Some. But there are two things that emerge from that. One, that you only operate during the campaign period. Only during the campaign the name period. Of the, the name of the council is the Council for Political for, for for Responsible, responsible Political, political behavior. behavior. Should that then be amended for, to, to read during election campaigns? Because the part of the challenge is that there's a perception that you should be operating throughout the, 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 the life of the country. And I, I agree with you that that is a challenge that, um, and it is a shortcoming mm -hmm. in terms of how people view us and yeah. in fact criticize us mm -hmm. because we have not been complaining or is issuing releases during the non-campaign non period. So that is a, and, a and, and the second part, is it that you only, that the council only responds to complaints that are recorded, complaints that are brought to its attention, or does the council see a role in its monitoring capacity, in its oversight capa capacity of issuing statements whether there's a report or not? No, we can issue a statement whether a report or not. But like I said, in many instances, um, we only see a limited mm -hmm. amount of things. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, we depend upon the citizenry at large to tell us what they would consider to be breaches. Mm -hmm. One of the things we have attempted to do since 2015, since the inception of the council, was try to do an education process for the citizen Correct. at large. In 2015, we had the two, uh, the major newspapers, The Guardian and The Express, print the code and distributed it with their newspapers. Again, we followed that process in 2020. So we did it for the general elections. general elections. And we tried to circulate the code as widely as possible. Uh, once you get a copy of a newspaper, you would have a copy of the code. We also have the website up and running, and we invite people to look at the website, look at the entire code, and ensure that they are aware of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. But in the Trinidad space, where Pekong and fatigue is the order of the day when people throw pekong at each other, you know, in the normal course of co course of the day, and is a, f a regular feature of the political of the political platforms. Where does the council draw the line? How do you differentiate between what is is ordinary pekong, what is normal pekong in the Trinidad in, it, in, in the Trinidad sense, and what is just irresponsible political behavior? Well, this is where what all that the council does is work in strictly in accordance with what the code has uh, mm -hmm. prescribed. And for instance, if something is deemed to be derogatory, therefore it cannot simply be normal pecong. Mm -hmm. 
And in fact, I, I would tell you that in 2015, when we first launched, uh, I appeared on a, a television program. And one of the callers to the program says, but how all you could stop we back and all? That's we politics. That um, all you get out of here because all you're mm -hmm. wasting time. And we know that that is what people want to hear. People go to meet and say to hear the back and all. But the point about it is that we have to ask ourselves, what is an acceptable standard that we as a citizenry, as a people, would want to accept as we move forward in the development of our color, of our country and of our democracy. And that's where we need to go. So we have to draw a line at some point in time. And when statements are made, we have to make inferences. And this is why, for instance, I mean, a lot of people would say, Vishnu Raghunath is the, is the person who's making these statements. And, but it's not Vishnu Raghunath per se. The council is drawn up of nine members, all of whom are heroes in their own rights, let's put it like that, um, specialists in their own fields, and who uh, hold a level of integrity and ethics and are accepted so within the society. And they come together and say, this is not acceptable. And that's how we operate. Because one of the comments that have been made is that the, given your own standing as a, as a political scientist, as a regular political commentator, being so close to the politics of the, of the country, you as the head of the council could be perceived as having some sort of bias as well, given the fact that you regularly comment on, on matters throughout. How, how would you respond to that? Well, that was one of the concerns I had raised with, with Archbishop Harris Mm -hmm. when he invited me to serve as chair of the, mm -hmm. the council. And I told him, I said, but I am outside there. People are going to say that I am biased. And I said, even though there have been some in elections where I couldn't go to a PNM meeting because they would call me a UNC spy, and I couldn't go across a UNC v meeting Vice because Vista. I was called yes. a UNC spy, a mm -hmm. PNM spy. I said, he says, and that is the reason why I want you there, because you, you carry a level of objectivity in what you say. And mm -hmm. yes, sometimes it doesn't bode well with whoever you criticize in, but you say it all the same. And that, I think, is what he asked me to do mm -hmm. when I came on. And in fact, what I do now, uh, even during this election campaign season, when people invite me to talk about the code and the council, I tell them I'm not talking politics, party politics. You invite me. Mm -hmm. Another time, I will talk to you about what is happening. And, and, and let, me, let me see if I could draw you out on, on, on this one, though. How comfortable are you with the, the behavior of our politicians during this, this, this election campaign? I am not comfortable at all. I think mm -hmm. we have a far way to go in getting our politics to the level in which we should get it to. Uh, the, our politicians try to use every loophole in the book to say that they could breach what we will call ethical behavior. And we have to say enough is enough. Uh, we've been saying that. And the challenge, however, is that some people take us seriously. Some people don't. Mm -hmm. I remember one politician, after we had sanctioned him, actually went on a platform and said, I have been sanctioned, so I will try and pre protect myself from being sanctioned again. However, Others go and do it all over again. So that is where we have the problem. Some political parties, I, I mean, I have no fear in saying it, some political parties, uh, their leadership have said, we're not signing, we're not endorsing our code, for whatever reason. We, however, say, when we, we start a campaign, we invite everybody to be part and parcel of it. And even if you don't want to come and endorse it, we're still going to assess you mm -hmm. as being part and parcel because this is not about you and your party. This is about the development of our democracy in Trinidad and Tobago. And are uh, the, the major parties, the PNM, the UNC, the NTA, the, 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 the PP, those are the ones you're hearing a lot about in the, in, in the election now. Have they signed on to this code? Okay, so if we go back to way back to 2014, the PNM, the UNC, the ILP, the COP, and the MSG, they were the initial signatories. Between 2015 and 2021, I go all the way up to 2021 because we did Tobago House of Assembly elections, we have a lot of other parties came on and voluntarily signed the code. Not all of them, however, are signatories. So 
And again, too, I am a little bit confused as to how, whether we could say somebody is a signatory or not, because they might be in a one party today and tomorrow in another party. So we have had that challenge. The fluidity of the politics. We have had that challenge. Mm -hmm. we, we have that party with one of the parties contesting the election. This election, mm -hmm. where the people who would have signed on in 2021 are no longer part of that party. Mm -hmm. However, where they remain within the party, we say the party is a signatory. Uh, but in answer to your direct question, not all of those parties that you call are signatories to the court, even though they are operating outside there, and even though some of them have submitted sure. complaints to the council, and we have dealt with who tell, has tell us, it. Tell us, Dr. Ragunath, how do people make a complaint to the, to the council? Many people would, uh, we, we have an email address, info at politicalethicstt.org. We invite them to go that way. Many of them, however, either uh, have telephone numbers, WhatsApp messages, email contacts. I mean, my email contact is outside there. Everybody know me at UWE and my email contact. So people send um, in all sorts of ways. Until this morning, we had had people complaining. Mm -hmm. um, sending in complaints, so we're going to deal with them at our next at sitting. Our, at our next sitting. Dr. Raghunath, it's been a pleasure chatting with you on Altos. I'm sure that over the course of time and as the elections c continue, and we do have some coming up, we'll be in touch with you to, to get your views on, on more matters as we go along. It so has thanks been again. my pleasure. It has been my pleasure. Good morning. We thank Dr. Raghunath for his, for, for his intervention this morning.